Are you ready to look at the highest highs and lowest lows that hip hop has had to offer this year? Because today, we're going to be looking at the five best and worst songs of 2024 so far. Now, when it comes to rap music in 2024, there has been few years ever at this point that can compare in terms of how many great moments the genre has seen. From the biggest rap beef in decades to the return of hip hop legends. The songs releasing in 2024 have made for nothing less than a sheer spectacle and whether it's because a track is so brilliant that it's destined to be a future classic, or a record is so terrible that it's destroying an artist's career and reputation right in front of us. From the best all the way to the very worst in hip-hop right now, the genre hasn't had music this important dominating it in a very long time. So if you can't wait to see which tracks are going down in the books for better or for worse, let's waste no time and let's get right into it. Now kicking off this list with the worst songs, we got Drake and Snow Day's collaboration Wagwan Delilah and with this cut. In a year where Drake was involved in the most important rap beef the genre has seen in decades, a Hey There Delilah reimagining is not just the most embarrassing thing he could have released as he tries to stand on his own two feet after everything that went down, but beyond just this, this track is straight up one of the worst pieces of music you can subject your ears to hearing as Drake's laughable attempt at trying to put a Canadian spin on Hey There Delilah just fails miserably, as between the OVO rapper's vocals which sound so hollow and lifeless, the lyrics which take the structure of the original song and infuse it with Toronto lingo that Drake makes feel so cringe with some of the worst bars out there, and then also the fact that on top of all this, Drake is interpolating the melody of the original song over its original acoustics. On top of giving you secondhand embarrassment for Drake, this record will leave you straight out confused with how bad it is and after listening to Drake just fail so horribly and miss the mark when it comes to understanding what doesn't just make decent but even palatable and trendy music like he once used to at the bare minimum. It really leaves you shaking your head as you question if Drake is genuinely compromised in a way that he can never come back from after this beef and for all these reasons. Wagwan Delilah is the fifth worst song of the year so far. Now looking at the best songs, in the number five spot we got Burned by Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign and when it comes to this track, Although this newly formed duo's album Vultures 1 has been one of the most polarizing releases of the year, I think everyone can acknowledge that this song is genuinely amazing as it turns back the clock for Kanye as he raps like he did on an album like his 2005 classic Late Registration, as his lyrics are mature, poignant, and introspective, and as a result of all of this, he is able to give us so much insight into where his heart and soul are actually at during this point in his career in a way that is both captivating, but most importantly for classic Kanye standards, inspiring. Now, of course, right alongside this, it wouldn't be a highlight from Kanye without great production and with an instrumental that charges Ye's lyrical action forward with one of the most infectious melodies he's cooked up in quite some time, and on top of this, the hook and vocals done from Ty Dolla Sign only tie this record together to make it an experience like no other with his one-of-a-kind abilities. Now with this song having all the pieces in place to make an all-time great yay cut, the only thing that could have made it better is if its running time could be a little longer than 1 minute and 51 seconds, but still. For showing the world that Kanye West still has the ability to be a peak writer, producer, and curator all at once if he wants to, Burn is going down as one of the best songs we have gotten this year. And now back to the worst songs coming in at number 4 on this list. We got another atrocity against music with the J. Cole and Cash Cobain collaboration Grippy, and oh my god. Now while musically, the beat and performance from Cash Cobain did nothing to deserve being here. The curation choice he made to put J. Cole on a track like this as he spits one of his worst verses of all time, takes every decent part about this record down with it to near rock bottom of the rap world, as in a year where Cole did release a pretty good project in Might Delete later despite all the controversy his name has been surrounded in ever since all the beef. This is going to be the verse that is remembered most from this chapter in his career because J. Cole just completely folds in on everything that has made him beloved, as he just drops one of the most cringy, unsettling, and embarrassing performances from not just himself, but any MC who's ever been considered great by the culture that we've ever seen. Now with J. Cole trading in his disciplined lyrical style to try to copy Cash Cobain and between his flow which is one of the choppiest and most turbulent I've heard all year, to his bars which when you see how bad the punchlines get and just how hard Cole reaches to try to play in a field that he should never even be allowed to go near again, 
as he delivers some of the most questionable lyrics that have ever crossed my ears. This song is a complete betrayal of everything he stands for as he just spits in the face of everything positive he has contributed to rap in this portion of his career and overall. With an instrumental that feels so unfitted and really juvenile for J. Cole at this point, and a Cash Cobain performance which makes things feel even more weird when you see just how him and his production style come together with Cole on this track to create an absolute abomination of an experience. This all-time low for J. Cole is the fourth worst song of the year so far. Now coming in at number four for the best songs on this list, we got a mega collaboration between four superstars in the rap world with Future, Metro Boomin, Travis Scott, and Playboy Cardi's track Type-ish, and with this record. In an era where the quality of most stuff coming out in trap music has taken an absolute nosedive and as a whole, the subgenre was becoming more lifeless with every new release in it. This song served as a breath of fresh air and a wake-up call that set an entirely new bar for what great trap music can sound like in 2024. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's no crazy layers behind this song, but it's a musical spectacle like nothing else we have seen as we see four artists who at this point in their careers are all operating on different paths yet cross over seamlessly in this hypnotizing banger that is able to capture why every single one of them are some of the best artists that the genre has to offer right now. From Future's commanding lyrics that fuel a performance of his which feels like one of his most inspired in nearly a decade. To Travis Scott, whose spacey vocals are intertwined into the core of the track to make some of its most tense and powerful moments. To Playboy Cardi, who in a dominant run of features and singles where he continues to show off his one-of-a-kind creative ability, pushes even further how he can utilize this darker and more grim voice of his, all the way to of course Metro Boomin, who orchestrates this track with an instrumental that is woven together at each corner to perfectly match the energy each artist is channeling and makes their respective verses feel more powerful and otherworldly. All in all, in an era where many mega collaborations feel like they are phoned in and carelessly stitched together at the last minute by splicing a few verses from popular artists, this cut stands in the face of all of this as it has redefined audiences' expectations on what a mega collaboration can sound like and for bringing out the best in all of these artists and giving us one of the most entertaining and thrilling rap songs we have seen in quite some time. This track is the fourth best of the year right now. Now just as we get a great song out of the way, we now unfortunately gotta look at a bad one. And going back to the worst songs, we are starting to go beyond just embarrassingly bad cuts to, in this case, records that are career-altering levels of horrible. And in this spot, we got Kid Cudi with his cut Willis, and with this god-awful track. While both of Kid Cudi's Insano series albums this year felt like they were just missing something and just didn't have the integrity needed to be a strong and welcome addition to his catalog, this song didn't just drive people to think sentiments like these more and more but it seriously makes you reconsider everything you once knew about Kid Cudi as once you hear the abomination he puts you through, you can just never look at this guy the same. Now with Willis, this song fails in every which way possible by just featuring an abysmal performance from Cudi that goes against everything he has ever represented to us, instead of letting unrivaled passion guide him to the most emotional and powerful thing he can give us. Cudi lets the visionless delusion that made this entire era of his career for him flop as he just releases 4 minutes of absolutely nothing, and I really mean nothing. As Cuddy and close collaborator Chip the Ripper, who he brings down with him, just babble here, make random noises, and find every other way to embarrass themselves in one of the most painful listening experiences out there. I mean, the fact that somebody who can release a song like this is considered a professional and at that, in the past has been one of the best artists we have had in the entirety of hip-hop, is just absolutely insane. And because of this, in all honesty, seeing Cuddy reach this point is more sad than it is even laughable, as he is just spiraling out of control on this massive tangent of nothing. And for these reasons, for giving us a song that I would even say makes Speeding Bullet to Heaven look good in comparison, Willis is one of the worst songs of 2024 without a doubt. Now moving into the top three best songs of the year so far, we are looking at some genuine peak rap music and in this spot. We got Schoolboy Q and his track Blue Sides, and the only way I can describe this song is by calling it absolutely breathtaking. Now, following being absent in the rap game for years, it seemed like Top Dog Entertainment's very own Schoolboy Q was ignoring his rap career and just did not have the same passion for it like he once did, but with this one track, he didn't just put these claims to rest, but he told us so much more than he ever had to in what is now the emotional centerpiece of his entire discography. For a rapper who's always kept the intensity so high, hearing this choked up version of Q deliver the most thoughtful, 
moving and reflective lyrical performance of his lifetime is such an emotional journey as we are able to see him reach this full circle moment where he's looking back on everything with the wisdom that few other MCs in the genre have ever been able to translate into their music at this point in their careers. From dealing with the loss of one of his best friends in Mac Miller, to telling us about the personal sacrifices that he had to make in his life to make sure that he could set up the people around him, but then also letting us know about the frustration and irony of the choices he has made as well through lines like, sometimes you gotta be a deadbeat when your kids gotta eat. Time and time again throughout this lyrical confession, the emotion Schoolboy Q is letting us know run through him as he is coming to terms with his very existence is one of the most surreal experiences all of hip-hop has had to offer, and overall, doing all of this over a beautiful jazz and soul-infused instrumental which perfectly captures the emotional angst of this song. Blue Sides is a song that is perfectly written and masterfully produced, and for these reasons, it's an all-time great rap song and what's shaping out to be an all-time great year. Now, just as we look at one of the most touching songs that rap has seen in years, brace yourselves and get ready to look at one of the most painful listens of the year, as at number two for the worst songs, we got a guy who is a veteran when it comes to claiming his spot amongst the worst of them all with Tom McDonald. But he isn't just alone here this time, but he has teamed up with none other than Ben Shapiro with their collaboration, Facts, and oh my god! I don't know if we have ever heard a more cringe and headache-inducing rap song that just stands against every single value of this genre while trying to also make music within it. Now, if you have ever put yourself through the torture of listening to Tom McDonald and you thought that him alone was too much, I hope you're ready to see that with Ben alongside him. He gets even more insane and immersed within his own delusion, which just makes for a performance that even for his standards, which are already at the bottom, manages to set an even newer low for how agitating a song can be by failing on every single front, and beyond just Tom trying to defend his title as the worst rapper in the world. Ben Shapiro takes a spin in the booth with a verse so ridiculous that it really feels like a skit. As from what he's saying to his flow, which is somehow more annoying than the way he actually speaks, to his attempt at dissing Nicki Minaj, this feature's just as abysmal as the rest of the song and overall. For facts trying to exist in a space of music where it doesn't just fail to channel even one aspect of what defines it, but at the same time, it actively disrespects everything rap music stands for in the process. This is just bottom tier music to the highest degree, but what else should we expect from a Tom McDonald track where he teams up with a guy who is so stuck within his own delusion that he doesn't even consider hip hop to be music in the first place? Please, never let these two anywhere near a studio again. Now fortunately, back to the best songs of 2024. At number two, we got what is going to go down as one of the most important rap songs we will get this entire decade with future Metro Boomin and Kendrick Lamar's Like That and Wow. There are few songs in the over 50 year history of hip hop that have been able to flip an entire genre upside down like this one and this is because with a cut like this, it checks off every single box that you could possibly want from a great song. Built off one of the most amped up beats that Metro Boomin has ever put his heart into, that between sampling a track like 1988's Everlasting Bass and Easy 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 Does It, has so much important history embedded right into it, but also with Metro's one-of-a-kind musical wizardry, is still crafted to sound like nothing else that has ever touched the genre before. From the sonics alone, this song is able to invoke some faint traces of nostalgia yet feels so cutting edge, which is what the pinnacle of sampling and production in hip hop is about and beyond just this. Future delivers an all-time great performance which between his vocal riffs, memorizing hook, and array of hilarious lyrics set the perfect runway to have a great banger and while all of this already makes a special moment. The reason why it's made it onto this list, and is this high at that, is because all of this is brought together and made more alive than most other music can ever be. With Kendrick Lamar's verse, which I'm gonna say it, I know it's early, but this is one of the best feature verses of all time, as between Kendrick's manic energy, his aggressive flow, and of course, the barrage of lyrical darts he throws out, which from small lines that build up the weight of this performance to hit harder and harder to him calling out Drake and J. Cole as he decides there is no longer a big three in rap, to of course all the other Drake disses which looking back on them now, have only aged better as it looks like he set up each line here to only be built on in the future. What Kendrick Lamar did on this track is the very definition of peak rap music and with this coming behind peak performances from Future and Metro Boomin, you get a song that isn't just a great moment or a fun banger, but it's a generational song that embodies everything rap music can be when some of its greatest creatives infuse their dramatically different skill sets to make one genre-changing moment. 
Now with that out of the way, it is time. It's time to face our fears and look at the worst song of 2024 right now once and for all. And while in most years in rap history, a track like Fax would end up taking this horrible title with ease. This year, we got a song that manages to reach an even lower low, but in a much different way. And if you would have told anybody this months ago, people would probably think you're crazy, but the worst song of 2024 is from Drake with the hard part six and with a cut like this. While musically, it's nowhere near as bad as any of the songs we have looked at on this list leading up to this. In a genre like hip hop, where your pen game and lyrical ability doesn't just serve as the core of a track, but for most artists, what you say represents your entire reputation and name as an MC. The lyrical breakdown Drake has here doesn't just make for a horrible song that really has you questioning what he was thinking when making it. But from the way he tries to deceive his own fans here with blatant lies, to the manner he tries to back down all of Kendrick Lamar's allegations as he drops some of the worst rebuttals in the history of battle rap. This song has taken everything Drake has ever done and scarred it in a way that Kendrick Lamar's best disses on their own could have never, because as Drake delivers this miserable song that as it has aged, has only gotten worse with each moment as more information has dissolved his bars and has shown them to be straight out lies. There is really so much wrong with this song that you can go line by line to break down how Drake just fails miserably in every sense of the word, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go over the highlights, which from Drake defending himself from everything alleged by saying that he's too famous to be the things people are saying, when it feels like being famous has become the requirement for being those things, to Drake misinterpreting Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale track, Mother I Sober, and trying to speak been one of the most awful things that can happen to a human being into this whole gotcha moment and still even with crossing this line failing to do even anything with it as drake wasn't even able to fundamentally comprehend that kendrick wasn't even talking about himself on that track to then lying about setting kendrick lamar up with fake information which everybody already thought was bs when the track dropped but then it was only proven to be actually false by a mysterious twitter user who showed that drake lost these items a while ago and that they are not even in Kendrick Lamar's possession like the track clearly states. This song makes Drake not just take an L in this beef, but one for his entire reputation and brand, as he has people now questioning everything about him and his artistry is in the most important moment of his career. He managed to not hit on a single one of the things he said in this track, and matter of fact, this has only opened up the floodgates for people to dispute anything he has ever done and remove him from any conversations his resume otherwise could have put him in so overall. For disgracing a high caliber artist and damaging their career in a way that seems like no matter what happens, he will never fully recover from. The Heart Part 6 is the biggest musical disaster of the year. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for, the number one best song of 2024 so far, and I'm gonna be honest, I kinda lied to you guys here. Picking just one best song for this spot was harder than ever, and in an effort to not flood this list with tracks from pretty much just one artist, in this spot, the best songs of the year so far are all gonna go to the same artist in Kendrick Lamar with his tracks, Not Like Us, Euphoria, and Meet the Grams, and with this trifecta, Kendrick Lamar put on a genre-defining performance that showcased to us an MC more locked in than we have ever seen, and a competitor who understands not just how to deceive, but also defeat his opponent with all three of these records, that each in their own unique way, highlight how Kendrick has mastered his craft to the highest level. Not Like Us is a hit song that manages to prioritize lyricism and offer up conscious verses that melt down Drake's persona, yet despite being the first number one rap song with three verses since the early 2010s, it's still able to be such a fun and catchy track because Kendrick shows here that he knows how to walk on the thin line of making hip hop that can have mass appeal, yet not sacrifice even one bit of his integrity and beyond just this amazing cut, even better than it is a track like Euphoria, which is a brilliant overview of why Kendrick Lamar reached this point of sheer and utter disdain for Drake, and overall, does one of the best jobs at calling out a rapper for their foolish antics and showing off the downward spiral they have been on, all through three instrumentals worth of Kendrick Lamar's genius lyrical annihilation, which is also dynamic, unpredictable, and with Kendrick's flow switches and constant morphing of his vocal tones in pockets. With every single thing he does on this cut, he is showing us that he is on a level that only few others in this genre have ever been on, and ultimately, the best song out of this bunch and from the entire year is Meet the Grams, which is the most sinister and disrespectful diss track that hip-hop has seen in ages, and over one of the most horrifying instrumental loops cooked up by none other than The Alchemist. Kendrick Lamar is able to bring his artistic genius into battle like nobody else ever has as he gives us a song where he talks to Drake's family members and tells them how horrible of a person he is as he digs through his family roots and calls him out for all the awful things he believes he stands for in the most disrespectful and effective way possible. 
With the genius concept and all of the jaw-dropping moments on this track, which even with the reveal that Drake may be hiding a daughter, which although there is absolutely no proof of, whether it is true or not, for the sake of the track does not really matter because the song isn't just perfect in every other single way. But the story and narrative Kendrick is building as he talks to his son and parents would make such a shocking truth make sense, and this is what battle rap is all about. Kendrick took his opponent and made some of the most creative and brilliant tracks you could ever possibly hear in this environment, and for this reason, not like us and Euphoria are 1C and 1B respectively, and ultimately taking our mid-year title for Song of the Year. It's Meet the Grams for being a sinister battle rap masterpiece that breaks down not just any person, but the biggest rapper in the world and leaves them exposed in a fashion that only a song crafted to sheer perfection could ever when the stakes are this high. So there you have it. There is my list of the best and worst songs of 2024 so far, and let me know. Do you agree with my list? I can't wait to hear what you have to say, and let me know what your best and worst songs of 2024 are in the comments below so far. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see my video coming up on the best and worst albums of 2024, which you definitely don't want to miss. And if you want to see the worst songs that rappers like Drake, J. Cole, and Eminem have released that have embarrassed their careers like no other tracks ever could, check out the suggested video.